Right. So hello everybody. Uh, this is the 10th episode of Meet the PhDs and today Kavya is joining us from the Netherlands. Hi Kavya, thanks for joining. Hi Shaili, thanks for giving us this opportunity. <laughs> thanks. It's nice to see you after a long time, uh, although we did uh, catch up because of this yesterday. Yes. So it was, uh, it's, it's a nice opportunity to get in touch um, career-wise, like professionally and also personally. Yes, um, definitely. So just uh, this is to the audience that Kavya is uh, joining us from the city Groningen. Uh, I don't know how I'm pronouncing this again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and this is uh, located in Netherlands. So she is in the second year of, year of her PhD at the Department of Nuclear Medicine and Molecular Imaging at University Medical Center, Groningen, Netherlands. So I'll be asking her a couple of questions that I have asked the other PhD students, and we'll see what her experiences and insights are. So Kavya, are you ready for the interview? Yes, for sure. Okay. <laughs> So I'll shoot the questions now. So mm -hmm. I've briefly mentioned about the department that you're part of. Um, so just to uh, tell everybody what you're actually uh, right now, which department you are in, uh, you can tell us in more in detail about that. And also what are the research questions that you're trying to answer in your PhD? Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you for your questions. Um, so I'm uh, currently in my second year uh, mm -hmm. of PhD and uh, um, as Shaili mentioned, it's the Nuclear Medicine and Molecular Imaging Department at the uh, University Medical Center of Groningen. Uh, so um, in, in this department, basically, uh, we use uh, radio tracers to image um, a specific uh, uh, part. And uh, that, that's just in simple terms. Um, so. I would be using the application of radio tracers to image the rodent brain mm -hmm. in my uh, study. And uh, this type of imaging is basically called PET imaging, which uh, stands for positron emission tomography. Mm -hmm. It's uh, basically an imaging modality, which is quite different from uh, CT and MRI, because CT and MRI, uh, they basically give you uh, anatomical information. But in order to know uh, a more in detail the metabolism um, and blood flow in a particular region, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, you need another type of imaging, and that's what I am doing. It's called PET imaging, but at the preclinical level, so it's a micro PET imaging. Mm -hmm. And uh, coming to my research question, um, it's uh, um, regarding uh, novel applications of uh, adenosine and dopamine receptors in the brain. Um, so th these receptors, uh, in short, they actually, they are present in the striatum of the brain and uh, they are very important in cognition and motor control of an organism, basically. So uh, I, my aim is to uh, study, dwell, dwell more into these receptors and their function uh, in a disease environment Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and then I would also be imaging these uh, and I would uh, ki kind of quantify in real time how the, these receptors uh, are changing um, in uh, disease models. So that, that's going to be my um, uh, research question and further progress in disease models. Yeah, interesting. It's, it's interesting that we, uh, even I am uh, going to work on dopamine receptors in one of my study. So it's interesting to merge the two uh, type of uh, research methods. So one is like preclinical and the one is clinical. Another point uh, that I wanted to mention here is that as you mentioned clearly about difference between CT, MRI and PET, but we also have like functional magnetic resonance imaging where we can actually study the blood flow. Uh, so, I mean, just to mention it that way because uh, yeah. MRI has different branches. We yeah. can sometimes just study the uh, white matter tracts or we yeah. can also study the gray matter. It just depends on the type of MRI that we are trying to employ, uh, employ in the study, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, to, yeah, I mean, yeah. uh, give a broad yeah. overview to all the audience about it because these are all the imaging modalities, different imaging yes. modalities that are available. Yeah, okay. definitely. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, just to also be clear, apart from brain, uh, pet, the pet is also used for whole body. Yeah. Uh, 
it's uh, that's how they detect the uh, tumor nodules in a person's body basically so yeah yes i'm uh, as far as i remember and whatever i have uh, with the limited knowledge that i have on pet i remember that uh, they use this a lot for tumor detection right yes they use they use uh, so the um, so the tracer would be FDG, uh, and uh, it's it's glucose basically. Yes. So yes. Uh, because cancer yes. cells they are highly active, and uh, it it's just easy also to detect. You can see several nodules on a PET image. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, why did you choose this field, and what was the moment like when you decided to pursue your PhD in this field? Yeah. Um, so. Uh, basically, I was uh, in master's. I worked uh, initially at the cell biochemistry lab. Mm -hmm. um, in that lab, I uh, concentrated on genetics and uh, um, mo mostly into genetics and molecular science. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the second project was uh, more of imaging. Um, and uh, I used a cryo-electron microscope. Uh, to image uh, proteins and uh, it, that that's when when I um, actually got the first ever structure of the protein by mm -hmm. myself it was a really um, a precious moment and it uh, kind of changed um, or revolutionized my career trajectory as well mm -hmm. and that's when I got gained confidence basically that I can proceed further for PhD. Uh, but however, I wanted to transition from a, a, a very microscopic scale for protein is like an angstrom level. So I wanted to take it to another level using a complex system uh, image modality. So that's why I applied to, to these labs that use uh, imaging at a larger scale as well. Yes. So, and to also tell the audi audience additionally is that uh, Netherlands is a great place for uh, studying, especially uh, imaging. I mean, also, if you're into like all these clinical neuroimaging stuff, then yeah. Netherlands is uh, one one of the place to go to. I mean, in fact, uh, Donders and yeah. Yeah. Right. And yeah the, uh, the labs at uh, Amsterdam and uh, Groningen are really extremely specialized in uh, nuclear medicine. Uh, I would say so. It's a really nice <laughs> place yeah. to study. Yeah. Yeah. And what was the moment like when you decided to pursue this PhD in this field? Was the moment when you actually, um, when you were talking about the protein, was it that? Yes. Yeah, so what happened when I found the structure and started writing my second thesis, uh, I had also had I, I also had to write um, a kind of a research paper uh, on one of the labs of my interest, uh, come up with a question and then ta how to approach the question basically. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, going through several labs uh, to approach the professors for doing the same, mm -hmm. and then I found uh, the lab here. And I approached actually my current supervisor asking him if I can write about his work. Mm -hmm. And um, in fact, then he um, accepted me for this uh, uh, short um, period, uh, kind of an internship, a uh, writing internship. And um, yeah, th that's how I got to know more about the lab and further, uh, if, if, uh, like um, further along. And uh, yeah, and that's when I also decided, among other PhD options, I'll also apply to this particular lab. Nice. I yeah. mean, this is a very different concept that I'm hearing here is that you have to write about a lab or their work. This is something very new, very new to me. Yeah, so in our master's, uh, the master's at the University of Groningen, because that's where I studied uh, molecular biology and biotechnology, it's very intensive. You will, you have two master theses, uh, one major thesis um, uh, in that, in that, and um, uh, the subjects that they they teach you, it has theory, um, short project, and uh, the presentation based on your short project. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, we have uh, something called essay and colloquium. So this was the essay that I was talking about. We had to target uh, research questions in a particular lab and uh, try to figure out answers uh, mm -hmm. while working with the professor. So nice. I think this gives you an opportunity to network as well. So yes. why not? I mean, it's a very practical exercise and you got to a good, you got your PhD through this. So yes. Yeah, exactly.
uh, yeah, they had um, uh, they had sent a mail uh, saying you, I could also apply for the position. Um, so I applied, and uh, it was uh, between thirty-five to forty candidates this yeah. position. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Great. And um, so, do you like research in general? And what exactly sparked your interest in research? Yeah, so definitely I enjoy <laughs> research and the questions that uh, you can answer. Uh, and it's more the practical part of uh, research that I really like, uh, the hands-on training that you can do and based on that answers that you can unlock. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's all based from hypothesis and then you get the result of your own. So mm -hmm. that, that's why I really like it. Yeah, <laughs> like the process of it. That's that's so interesting because the, yeah. it's a challenging process, very challenging process, and that demands a lot of patience also. So exactly. it's good that you like such a challenging process. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what sparked your interest in research? Well, uh, yeah, as I said during uh, during masters, uh, the way uh, the, the the PhD students and the PI uh, they they worked in the in the lab and their work ethic and everything it it just ma it made me more motivated to uh, shift towards research basically um, because in uh, uh, most of the masters here you also have a, a second chance to move into management basically so they uh, they kind of uh, work for a year in research and then see okay if uh, research is good or if uh, management is a better option for them so um, uh, so for me uh, since my first master project went really well I got quite uh, nice results Plus, yeah. the PI was very uh, supportive and uh, motivating. That's very important. So yes. the, then it just um, yeah uh, made me strive to achieve more in research, basically. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> and could you tell everybody about the career trajectory that you have so far? Um, so yeah. based on what you did in in your bachelor's, master's, and what you're doing now, in a brief uh, descriptive, yeah, way. Yeah, sure. So uh, for me, it has been uh, a slight change, I would say. Um, I, in my bachelor's, I basically concentrated on molecular immunology, um, mm -hmm. and uh, I concentrated on. Um, uh, allergic reactions and the associated cytokines uh, with the system and uh, towards masters it was also genetics and then protein studies mm -hmm. um, but later it transitioned to an imaging protein study mm -hmm. and uh, now uh, for my PhD it's uh, um, it's more of a imaging uh, study but along with molecular neuroscience uh, mm -hmm. because um, once I uh, image my um, animals, uh, I need to decapitate them and then look into the molecular uh, processes that had uh, occurred, uh, basically, with my treatments or um, the, the model itself. So, um, so yeah, it, it goes from a more of a physiological level to more of a molecular neuroscience level. Okay. Um, so it quite uh, covers uh, the whole aspect, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so uh, the, the current uh, project, um, I would be focusing on uh, Parkinson's study. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's a therapeutic Parkinson's study, and I hope that uh, it would <laughs> um, uh, go well. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, uh, we... We need to understand so many puzzles uh, in, in all these uh, sort of uh, diseases that are affecting a yeah. huge number of population these days. Definitely. Um, maybe yeah. Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, or um, chronic pain. There are a whole host of these uh, depression, anxiety, 
Yeah. Yes, definitely. One thing that I would also like to add is uh, uh, students should always go from a simple model system and try to go up to a more complex model system. They mm. can try to work uh, and get the basic ideas uh, from uh, at the simple level and then try to approach uh, the question in a more complex manner. So yep. that is something that's important. Mm. Because the first uh, experimental chapter for my PhD, I uh, did the same. I did it was more of molecular pharmaceutics work, mm. um, which gave me the answers to what I needed. What actually happens at, uh, of of these receptors in the striatum, and then now I'm going to answer uh, with uh, disease models. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It should be the approach, true, yeah. And also to uh, add on here a little bit is that uh, how we know each other is that we got to know, know each other through our bachelor studies from SRM University because we studied in the same class for four years. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> although uh, I, I don't remember if we had the same electives. So did you also take medical biotechnology? Yes, yes. Okay, then. Yes. So yeah. we had the same electives also. <laughs> it's, it's a long yeah. time, so I don't remember if you know, yeah. we had the same electives. <laughs> Cancer biology. It's yes, good. cancer biology, stem cell biology. Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. <laughs>